Chapter Eight: How the Grand Gollipoot Joined the Gnomes. After leaving the Whimsies, Guff continued on his journey and penetrated far into the northwest. He wanted to get to the country of the Growlywogs, and in order to do that, he must cross the Ripple Land, which was a hard thing to do. For the Ripple Land was a succession of hills and valleys, all very steep and rocky, and they changed places constantly by rippling. While Guff was climbing a hill, it sank down under him and became a valley, and while he was descending into a valley, it rose up and carried him to the top of a hill. This was very perplexing to a traveler, and a stranger might have thought he could never cross the Ripple Land at all. But Guff knew that if he kept steadily on, he would get to the end at last. So he paid no attention to the changing hills and valleys, and plodded along as calmly as if walking upon the level ground. The result of this wise persistence was that the general finally reached firmer soil and, after penetrating a dense forest, came to the dominion of the Growlywogs. No sooner had he crossed the border of this domain when two guards seized him and carried him before the Grand Gallipoot of the Growlywogs, who scowled upon him ferociously and asked him why he dared intrude upon his territory. I am the Lord High General of the Invincible Army of the Gnomes, and my name is Guff, was the reply. All the world trembles when that name is mentioned. The Growlywogs gave a shout of jeering laughter at this, and one of them caught the gnome in his strong arms and tossed him high into the air. Guff was considerably shaken when he fell upon the hard ground, but he appeared to take no notice of the impertinence and composed himself to speak again to the Grand Gollipoot. My master, King Roquat the Red, has sent me here to confer with you. He wishes your assistance to conquer the land of Oz. Here the general paused, and the Grand Gollipoot scowled upon him more terribly than ever, and said, Go on. The voice of the Grand Gollipoot was partly a roar and partly a growl. He mumbled his words badly, and Guff had to listen carefully in order to understand him. These growlywogs were certainly remarkable creatures. They were of gigantic size, yet were all bone and skin and muscle, there being no meat or fat upon their bodies at all. Their powerful muscles lay just underneath their skins like bunches of tough rope, and the weakest growlywog was so strong that he could pick up an elephant and toss it seven miles away. It seems unfortunate that strong people are usually so disagreeable and overbearing that no one cares for them. In fact, to be different from your fellow creatures is always a misfortune. The Growlywogs knew that they were disliked and avoided by everyone. So they had become surly and unsociable, even among themselves. Guff knew that they hated all people, including the gnomes. But he hoped to win them over, nevertheless and knew that if he succeeded, they would afford him very powerful assistance. The land of Oz is ruled by a namby-pamby girl who is disgustingly kind and good, he continued. Her people are all happy and contented, and have no care or worries whatever. Go on, growled the Grand Gollipoot. Once the Gnome King enslaved the royal family of Ev, Another goody-goody lot that we detest, said the general. But Ozma interfered, although it was none of her business, and marched her army against us. With her was a Kansas girl named Dorothy, and a yellow hen, and they marched directly into the Gnome King's cavern. There they liberated our slaves from Ev, and stole King Roquat's magic belt, which they carried away with them. So now our king is making a tunnel under the deadly desert, so we can march through it to the Emerald City. When we get there, we mean to conquer and destroy all the land, and recapture the magic belt. 
Again he paused, and again the Grand Gallipoot growled. Go on. Guff tried to think what to say next, and a happy thought soon occurred to him. We want you to help us in this conquest, he announced, for we need the mighty aid of the Growlywogs in order to make sure that we shall not be defeated. You are the strongest people in all the world, and you hate good and happy creatures as much as we gnomes do. I am sure it will be a real pleasure to you to tear down the beautiful Emerald City, and in return for your valuable assistance we will allow you to bring back to your country ten thousand people of Oz to be your slaves. Twenty thousand, growled the Grand Gallipoot. All right, we promise you twenty thousand, agreed the general. The Gallipoot made a signal and at once his attendants picked up General Guff and carried him away to a prison, where the jailer amused himself by sticking pins in the round, fat body of the old gnome to see him jump and hear him yell. But while this was going on, the Grand Gollipoot was talking with his counselors, who were the most important officials of the Growlywogs. When he had stated to them the proposition of the gnome king, he said, my advice is to offer to help them. Then, when we have conquered the land of Oz, we will take not only our twenty thousand prisoners, but all the gold and jewels we want. Let us take the magic belt, too, suggested one counselor. And rob the Gnome King and make him our slave, said another. That is a good idea, declared the Grand Gollipoot. I like King Roquat for my own slave. He could black my boots and bring me my porridge every morning while I am in bed. There is a famous scarecrow in Oz. I'll take him for my slave, said a counselor. I'll take Tick-Tock, the machine man, said another. Give me the tin woodman, said a third. They went on for some time, dividing up the people and the treasure of Oz in advance of the conquest, for they had no doubt at all that they would be able to destroy Ozma's domain. Were they not the strongest people in all the world? The deadly desert has kept us out of Oz before, remarked the Grand Gallipoot. But now that the Gnome King is building a tunnel, we shall get into the Emerald City very easily. So let us send the little fat general back to his king, with our promise to assist him. We will not say that we intend to conquer the gnomes after we have conquered Oz, but we will do so just the same. This plan being agreed upon, they all went home to dinner, leaving General Guff still in prison. The gnome had no idea that he had succeeded in his mission, for finding himself in prison he feared the growly wogs intended to put him to death. By this time the jailer had tired of sticking pins in the general, and was amusing himself by carefully pulling the gnome's whiskers out by the roots one at a time. This enjoyment was interrupted by the Grand Gallipoot sending for the prisoner. Wait a few hours, begged the jailer. I haven't pulled out a quarter of his whiskers yet. If you keep the Grand Gallipoot waiting, he'll break your back, declared the messenger. Perhaps you're right, sighed the jailer. Take the prisoner away, if you will. But I advise you to kick him at every step he takes. It will be good fun, for he is as soft as a ripe peach. So Guff was led away to the royal castle, where the Grand Gallipoot told him that the Growly Wogs had decided to assist the gnomes in conquering the land of Oz. "'Whenever you are ready,' he added, "'send me word, and I will march with eighteen thousand of my most powerful warriors to your aid.' Guff was so delighted that he forgot all the smarting caused by the pins and the pulling of the whiskers. He did not even complain of the treatment he had received but thanked the Grand Gallipoot and hurried away upon his journey. He had now secured the assistance of the Whimsies and the Growlywogs, 
but his success made him long for still more allies. His own life depended upon his conquering Oz, and he said to himself, I'll take no chances. I'll be certain of success. Then, when Oz is destroyed, perhaps I shall be a greater man than old Roquat, and I can throw him away and be king of the gnomes myself. Why not? Whimsies are stronger than the gnomes, and they also are my friends. There are some people still stronger than the Growlywogs, and if I can but induce them to aid me, I shall have nothing more to fear. End of chapter 8